people seem to be coming in pretty quickly. It looks yeah. like we're not electronically socially spacing very well. <laughs> up to 100 already. Yeah. All right, well, it seems to have slowed a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Um, hi, everybody. My name is Katie McFarland. I am the Assistant Dean of Undergraduate Admissions here at Stony Brook University. Um, welcome to our faculty workshop with the Department of Biology. Um, we're really happy you could all be with us today. Um, I have just a few housekeeping details that I wanted to go over um, before we get started. You can all submit questions um, through the Q&A section um, on the bottom of your screen. Um, there will be a few admissions professionals in the Q&A answering during um, the biology presentation and then any questions that we have for the biology department will be answered um, after Professor Gergen's uh, presentation. Um, also, this event is being recorded, so just so you guys are aware, um, it will be available on our YouTube page um, and after this event, everybody will be sent a link to the YouTube page um, so you can go back and re-review the event, event at any time. Um, so without further ado, um, I'd like to take the chance to introduce um, Professor Peter Gergen from the Department um, of Biology and, well, I guess biochemistry and cell biology, technically, um, and he happens to be the program director um, for the biology program. So welcome, Dr. Gergen. Thanks so much for joining us. All right. So thanks, Katie. Yes. Yeah, so as Katie said, my name is Peter Gergen, a professor in the Department of Biochemistry and Cell Biology and uh, the director of the undergraduate biology program. Um, welcome to all of you that are here today. We're going to spend a few minutes talking about um, the biology program, sort of the structure of the curriculum, what you should do to be well prepared um, to be here, um, some of the details in terms of the, the interesting things that we have to offer, um, and some of the things about research, uh, Stony Brook as a research one university and what that means uh, for students. So I have a PowerPoint that I'm gonna share. And boom. <clears throat> we'll uh, uh, use this PowerPoint slide to get started. Um, so again, uh, my name is Peter Gergen. I'm a professor in the Department of Biochemistry and Cell Biology and the director of the program in undergraduate biology. Um, and again, uh, welcome to all of you that are, that are here today. Um, so I wanna start off just to sort of lay out the landscape of Steinerbrook. So it is a research one university. Um, on this slide here, you can see over on the right slide, undergraduate education. This is me, Peter Gergen. Um, the undergraduate biology program supports the teaching efforts of three different life science departments. So I'm a faculty member in the Department of Biochemistry and Cell Biology. There's also a Department of Ecology and Evolution and a Department of Neurobiology and Behavior. And so those are sort of the big, the three big branches of biology as we think about it uh, uh, in the, the current environment. Um, and so I work with the faculty in these three departments for the, the bio courses that we teach. Um, these three departments together have about 70 different uh, faculty members that are content experts in their discipline. Uh, most of these faculty are hired to do research uh, as a major part of their career. And so it is a research university. They do some teaching, but they all, almost all of them have research labs. Um, two other points I wanted to make on this slide is if you look over on the, the right side again at undergraduate biology and what we do in terms of providing support to these three departments, um, that I have some data here about the numbers of students. Um, and so Stony Brook, um, this last fall, there was about 18,000 undergraduates at Stony Brook total um, uh, that over 3,000 of them are either biology majors or biochemistry majors. So this is a very, very popular uh, major uh, at Stony Brook University. Um, it's about a sixth of all, all the undergraduates. Um, uh, and so that's, it's a large school. It's a research one university with a lot of students that are interested in, in uh, the biological sciences. Um, Again, as a research university, the other thing I want to point out over here is that um, there is a school of medicine that has a lot of faculty that do research in the biological sciences, um, uh, in addition to these three departments, which are in the College of Arts and Sciences. Um, and there are a number of different graduate programs uh, in the different areas of the biological sciences, um, with um, altogether probably on the order of 250 to 300 faculty that have research programs in the biological sciences, um, and several hundred um, students that are here uh, as graduate students to get their, their um, uh, PhDs uh, in the biological sciences. Um, so it's a large school, it's a very research intensive institution, and there are a lot of students interested in biology. Um, uh, this, is side, well, this is a side we'll look at for a few minutes um, that talks about the curriculum. Um, and there's sort of three goals that I want to have with this slide. One is to just sort of lay out the overall structure of what the curriculum is like. Um, the second is um, uh, 
to talk about um, how to be successful, what you need to do if you wanna be prepared to come to Stunnerbrook and be successful. Um, and then the third is to spend a couple minutes talking about um, uh, what we'll call the different specializations or the different things that you can do in the biological sciences, um, mostly with respect to the upper division courses. So this slide here goes from left to right in terms of the different types of um, courses that you would take. Um, uh, the biology and biochemistry degrees both require um, that you take cognate courses in the areas of mathematics, physics, and chemistry. And it is true for almost all uh, good biology departments today. Um, the education in biology is built on a strong foundation uh, in these in mathematics, physics, and chemistry, in the physical sciences and in mathematics. Um, uh, so the, the curriculum as such, um, uh, uh, the bio major and the biochemistry major requires a year of general chemistry, a year of organic chemistry, uh, lab courses associated with those courses, a year of physics, a year of math, uh, depending upon the exact degree program, maybe two semesters of calculus and a, and a semester of statistics. Um, and then one of the things that's different about Steinerbrook compared to many other schools um, is that we don't start off with a year of intro bio with lab. Um, uh, many schools, you take two four credit courses, a three hour lecture, and then a one three hour lab uh, that meet each week. Um, at Steinerbrook, probably almost 20 some years ago, we separated uh, the lecture courses from the labs. Um, uh, we have three different lecture courses. So these are intro or foundational bio courses that don't have any labs associated with them. Um, you could look at the titles of these courses and go back and look at the departmental structure and probably figure out which department is responsible for which course. Um, so these three courses, foundational courses, um, they're modular. Uh, they can be taken in any order, although there's a recommended order, which is to take either 201 or 202 first and then take 203 um, uh, later. Um, uh, they're offered every semester. So in terms of getting through the foundational curriculum, um, uh, there's a lot of different times that you can start and you can do these courses in different orders. Um, so the lecture courses are modular in any order and offered every semester. Uh, the lab courses, I said before, they're separated from the lecture courses. Here, it's not modular, it's sequential. You have to do the first semester of the lab courses before you do the second semester. And we have two different flavors of second semester uh, foundational biology lab courses. Um, uh, one of the things that's different here and a lot of other schools are going in this direction uh, is that the lab courses are not about um, doing some cookbook exercise that sort of replicates what you talked about in lecture that week, um, but it's building skills. How do you read a scientific paper? How do you use equipment? How do you design an experiment? How do you analyze data? Um, so the, these courses are about building skills. Um, we'll come back to the upper division courses in a minute. Let me talk a little bit about how do you attack this curriculum? How do you do things? Again, this is the foundational stuff. This will be much of your first two years, your freshman and sophomore year will be spent uh, getting these courses done. Um, so one thing to know um, is that Again, biology builds on a strong foundation in math and chemistry. Um, uh, three of the four starting points in the biology curriculum uh, require as a prerequisite um, that you've taken the first semester general chemistry course. And we can see here the first semester general chemistry course requires as a co-requisite uh, calculus A, uh, the first semester of calculus uh, in that sequence. Um, and so in terms of getting started in either the biology or the biochemistry major at Stony Brook, um, the really important thing um, is that when you come to Stony Brook as a freshman, um, that you're prepared to take the first semester of calculus um, and that um, you're ready to go, step into at least the first semester of general chemistry. Um, uh, there are ways to fast track that a little bit. Um, it's possible to place out if you're doing uh, Calc BC in high school, you may place out of Calc 1, if not Calc 2. Um, uh, if you get a, a five on the AP chemistry exam, um, then you might place out of Gen Chem 1 and be able to start with not Gen Chem 2, but what's called molecular science 1 um, in fall of your freshman year. Um, so typically the freshmen that start here are not taking a bio course and follow their freshman year. They're taking math and chemistry courses and then general education courses. Um, and then it's spring of the freshman year when they'll start in with the bio curriculum. Okay, so that's the, the getting started. Um, I wanna talk a little bit about the specializations. Um, so there's a separate biochemistry major. Um, we'll see in a minute that it's uh, uh, structured very similarly to some of the different specializations uh, in the biology major. The biology major, there's a number of different specializations, uh, developmental genetics, ecology and evolution, environmental biology, neuroscience, 
uh, quantitative biology and bioinformatics, interdisciplinary biology. And we have had in the past a bioengineering specialization. Um, that one right now is, is on hold. Uh, the uh, College of uh, Engineering and Applied Sciences has, has put this uh, on hold for, for the moment. So the specializations, let's talk a little bit about what those are. Um, before we get to the specializations, I just point out with the foundational curriculum, we'll talk about the BA degree a little bit more in a minute, um, that the second semester of calculus is not required for the Bachelor of Arts degree. Um, uh, and then statistics uh, is required for the bio major, but not for the biochemistry major. So there's a couple of minor differences with respect to the math. Let's come back to the specializations. So what's shown here, the biochemistry major, if you look beyond the foundational curriculum, uh, beyond all of this stuff here, um, in your junior and senior year, and probably starting in your sophomore year, what do you need to take? And you'll see that most of these courses are 300 level courses. For the biochemistry major, um, you're gonna take um, four different lecture courses, cell biology, genetics, biochemistry one, biochemistry two. Um, one upper division lab course, right now the biochemistry lab course is the one that, that the biochem majors are taking. Um, and then two upper division electives uh, in the biological sciences. Um, so if you add that all up together, that's seven upper division bio courses. Uh, and then in addition, if you're a biochemistry major, um, you don't have to take statistics, but you have to take physical chemistry. Uh, if you're a biology major, there's all these different specializations that you could pick from. Let me just pick out two to sort of make the point. Um, the developmental genetic specialization, um, you, there's two lecture courses you have to take, genetics and animal development. There's a lab course that defines the specialization, the developmental genetics lab. And then there's five upper division 300 level bioelective courses that can be used to satisfy the third lecture course in the developmental genetic specialization. That would be courses uh, such as development of the nervous system, uh, evolution, uh, cell biology, cell signaling, um, uh, different upper division electives that pertain to developmental biology and genetics. Um, so the core of the specialization is three upper division lecture courses and a lab. Um, and then outside of that, there's a breadth requirement that you have to take another lab and two other lecture courses. So if you add all that up together, um, it's seven courses, uh, five lecture courses and two labs. Uh, and then for the biology major, again, it's statistics. Um, let's compare that uh, to the neuroscience specialization. And there's another very popular one in Stunner Book. Um, there you have to take the neuroscience lecture course. You have to do the neurobiology lab. And then here there's six track specific or specialization specific upper division bioelectives um, that you have to do um, uh, is actually two of those. So three lecture courses in a lab um, and then an elective lab and two elective bioelectric courses. And again, the specializations that are available here um, uh, touch a number of different areas that are um, uh, popular in, in modern biology. Um, uh, I mentioned before that the bioengineering specialization is one that, that's currently uh, on hold. Okay, so that's the BS degree, um, uh, all of these different specializations. Um, coming back to how you would pick one of these out, um, I would come back to your foundational curriculum. What are you doing here? Um, uh, let's just think about um, the biochemistry. So we'll go back to that. Biochemistry, you have to do upper division cell biology, genetics, and biochem one. If you go and look at the prereqs for cell biology, genetics, and biochem one, um, uh, the prereqs for those biochemistry courses, Bio 202 is a common prereq for all of those. Um, and then if it's cell biology or biochemistry, you also have to do uh, the second semester of organic chemistry. Um, so when you're doing the foundational courses, if you take Bio 202, and that's a course that you say, this, I really like this. Bio 203 was okay, but not as much, not as interesting to me. And Bio 201 um, was something very different from, uh, from what, what I'm in, interested in thinking about. Then you would begin to think about maybe the biochemistry major is what you want to select. Um, again, you could start as a freshman that way, many students do, um, but you could start as a bio major and decide after three semesters, you've done bio 202, 203, and 201, it really looks like the biochemistry major is what you want to do. Um, bio 202 is also a gateway prerequisite for developmental genetics, um, so maybe if it's genetics you're more interested in, uh, whoops, uh, that you uh, are thinking about that. Um, here you could take genetics. Uh, genetics is also a required course here. Another gateway course in this one is developmental biology. Genetics is in the spring, developmental biology is in the fall. You just think strategically about what you're taking and when you're taking it to make wise decisions about what you'd wanna do at the upper division. I'll just contrast that very briefly um, with neuroscience. Uh, there the gateway course is bio 203. So you're doing these three courses, bio 203, you take in fall of your um, sophomore year. You think organ physiology and neuroscience, this is the most interesting thing. Uh, let me think about choosing the neuroscience specialization. 
So you don't have to decide this now. Um, uh, you should decide it probably by the middle of your junior year at the latest, um, certainly not your last semester, um, but you should know that all these options are out there and begin thinking about what you might wanna explore during your first two years as you're getting through this, this foundational curriculum. Okay, so let's spend a minute talking about the BioBA. Um, uh, and so that's, this is a, um, another option besides doing a BS degree in biochemistry or any one of these upper division specializations. Um, so the BioBA is something that's only a couple of years old now. Um, it's similar to the BioBS in that the number of credits um, that's required at the foundational level in biology, chemistry, math, and physics is approximately the same. 47 versus 50, what's the difference? The BA only requires one semester of calculus. Uh, the BS requires two. Um, uh, importantly, um, doing all of these foundational courses in these science, in the sciences, biology, chemistry, math, and physics, satisfies the prereqs for medical school. We know many of the students that come to Stonybrook are interested in a career in the health professions, um, uh, that getting these things done so that they can become a physician's assistant or go to vet school or go to dental school or to med school um, is something that students are interested in doing. Um, students historically needed to pick the BS if they wanted to complete all of these in their major. Now they can pick the BA. So what's the difference? Well, there's three credits different at the uh, foundational level. The big difference is at the upper division level. We already talked about the specializations in biology. Um, you're doing seven courses, 20 upper division credits, two lab courses, and five lecture courses. And again, the upper division courses are organized into specializations. The BA degree only requires three upper division bio courses. One of them must be in an area of genetics. That's something that we think is really, really important. If you're going to have a bio degree from Stony Brook, that you have a, an understanding of what genetics is all about. And it's only three upper division courses biology, the specialization is then replaced with, a, with an approved non-overlapping liberal arts minor. The minors typically are 18 credits. Uh, that would be six courses. Um, if you're minoring in a discipline, um, one of those courses is going to be a gen ed course. And uh, if you're doing, uh, uh, as part of your general education, you're doing uh, Humanities Plus as one of your uh, general education requirements um, and you're minoring in English, then you'll do Hume and Hume Plus as part of the minor and then do now four courses uh, in English to complete the English minor. Um, that adds up to basically exactly the same number of credits as the BioBS. Um, uh, so we think this, the BA is gonna be quite popular for students that are interested in careers in the health professions. Um, again, it's only two years old and already there's um, 266 BioBA majors. Uh, on campus. Um, so it's um, already um, about half the size of the, the biochemistry major. Um, uh, just to give you a sense of the approved minors, and this list could change. Uh, this is on the undergraduate biology website that we try to keep this current. Um, uh, these, this is the current list of approved minors. It's quite diverse. It includes, includes things such as uh, creative writing. I mentioned uh, English. Um, history of health science and the environment, several different foreign languages um, uh, that you could minor in um, while getting a biology BA degree, uh, political science, a topic that's been of great interest over the last uh, couple of years, um, studio art, women and gender studies, writing and rhetoric, a lot of different things um, uh, that you could do to complete a biology BA degree without having to take seven, seven upper division bio courses uh, to complete your bio degree uh, here at Stony Brook. So why would you pick one versus the other? So why might a student choose the BA? So one is um, seeking to prepare for the future by com complementing a strong foundation in biology with the skills that are required in a minor degree program, such as it's a foreign language that you become fluent in a, in a foreign language, such as Spanish or, or Japanese, um, or maybe if it's the writing minor that you've become very, very proficient uh, at, at writing and, and professional writing. Um, if you're um, more interested in a non-science minor than specializing in a specific area of biology, you want to go to medical school, but you really love political science, um, you can do the bio BA degree, um, uh, take a bunch of courses in political science, uh, really enjoy those, do really well in them, while at the same time completing the requirements uh, that are the pre-med requirements. Um, uh, in terms of uh, flexibility, um, if you add up the number of science courses that you have to take, to get the bio BS or the biochem degree, you need to do approximately three courses every semester that you're at Stony Brook. Uh, so there'll be about 24 science courses that you're gonna need to take. 
if you have a semester or two that's light, where you're only doing one or two science courses, uh, then you're going to have other semesters where they're going to be heavy in science to, to catch up. Um, uh, the bio BA, um, it's got the, the 47 credits at the foundational level and then three upper division classes. Um, it ends up being about two and a half courses per semester rather than three. And so you're spreading the science out a little bit. Maybe you don't need to cram it all in um, into the, the first three years um, that you can uh, spread things out a little bit more. And one of the things we think is gonna be particularly attractive, students that are interested in doing a semester abroad um, in the bio, bio, bio BS degree, sometimes it's very challenging to figure out how can I do a, a semester abroad in Italy um, uh, and still complete all of the courses I need to complete uh, the science courses to get the bio BS degree. Well, if you're minoring in Italian, you can go to Italy for a semester and you can knock off um, half of the minor in Italian in one semester. And the fact that you um, uh, didn't take any science courses that one semester doesn't really put you that far behind. Okay, so that's why you might pick the BA. Why would you pick the BS given all the things I just talked about with the Bachelor of Arts degree? Um, so if you're really interested in one of the topics, uh, the specializations, um, I'm a developmental biologist, a developmental geneticist. I think genetics is the most interesting and important uh, thing that I've ever learned in my life. If you're a student that has a passion for genetics my, like, by, like myself, um, maybe that specialization is something that really, really interests you. Um, if you wanna go to graduate school, if you wanna become, go to graduate school, specifically in the life sciences, um, it's gonna serve you better uh, to do the seven upper division bio courses to really have a very strong foundation um, uh, and some depth in one area of biology. Um, if you wanna go to graduate school in genetics, having the developmental genetic specialization is a really good idea. If you wanna to go to graduate biology and neuroscience, coming from Stony Brook with an undergraduate specialization in neuroscience is a, is a really a strong thing to have on your record. Um, there are some health uh, science profession careers um, where several advanced courses in biology are required. Um, if you wanna get a doctorate in pharmacy, the PharmD program, um, that requires enough upper division biology courses that you probably wanna go ahead and do the bio BS degree. And then um, uh, if you're not sure of what you're interested in, uh, but you're really interested in using your hands, working in labs and doing research in the biological sciences, um, then the bio BS um, may be something that, that you prefer. Um, to come back to when you have to decide this, um, uh, we'll think of the BA and an approved minor as being similar to these specializations. All the foundational stuff is the same. What you're gonna do your freshman year is gonna be basically exactly the same. What you're gonna do your sophomore year is gonna be very similar. Um, the one thing that would be different um, is if you're thinking about the bachelor's in biochemistry versus a, a BA with an approved minor, what you might think about during your sophomore year. So I'm thinking about political science. Maybe I should take a second political science course during my sophomore year to see if I want to minor in that. Um, and if you're thinking about biochemistry as the alternative, um, maybe I should take the genetics course as a sophomore and see if I like the, if, if that's okay. Um, and so during your sophomore year, start to investigate the options that lie beyond that um, and lay a solid foundation where you're not closing the door on minor in political science or majoring in biochemistry, but you're starting to figure out what it is that, that you really like doing, what are you good at, what makes you wanna get up in the morning and go to school and be a successful student. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so we talked about those two things. I'll spend the last couple of minutes here um, talking about research. So again, this is a research university. Um, there's lots of opportunities to do research. Um, uh, there's a lot of different things we do in the biology program uh, to promote students being engaged in undergraduate research. We offer a workshop every semester. Um, we actually didn't do it this fall. It's the first time since 2012 we didn't do it. Uh, and that was a COVID-19 uh, casualty. Um, uh, there are funds to support research in the summer. There are summer programs to get students that haven't gotten any research experience involved. Um, several different funded programs. Um, and then something that we've participated in the last seven years um, that we're very excited about, something that's called IGEM or the Internationally Genetically Engineered Machine machines competition, which are student-led research competition where students do things in the summer um, uh, and then participate in an international jamboree. Um, the 2020 uh, competition, again, it still happened even in the COVID era, but it was quite different from prior years. The 2019 competition, um, Stony Brook had 16 go to that. The giant jamboree was in Boston. I think there were 343 teams from all over the world that participated in that. So those are things that allow students to become involved in research. Um, I just wanna point out here that the engagement 
Um, and research is a reality at Stony Brook. Um, uh, so in the spring of 2018, there were 2000 biology majors. If we just took a snapshot of all those majors and asked how many of them had done independent research for academic credit at any point in their academic career, it was almost 12% of the students that had done that. Um, what we know is that very few students do research as freshmen. Um, it ramps up. And the thing that we're very proud of is that if we look at the, the spring of 2018 snapshot, the students that had matriculated as freshmen four years earlier uh, that were bio majors in the spring of 2018, 34.3%, um, uh, uh, more than a third of them had done research for independent credit. Um, so this is something that's, that's de a definite reality at Stony Brook. It's a large place, um, it is a research university. Uh, it is possible for students to come here and become engaged in research um, uh, uh, during their undergraduate career. And that's, we know that's a high impact practice that, that improves student outcomes, retention, um, long, uh, career development. Um, there's so many things that are positive about that. And that's one of the things that we're very proud about being able to offer to, to students at Stony Brook. Um, I'll just close out here with talking about our summer research programs. This shows over the last 10 years from 2011 to 2020, um, the number of students that have participated in some of our different uh, summer research programs. Um, Eureka is something that's been around for about 20 years at this point. Um, it st stands for Undergraduate Research Experience and Creative Activities. Um, nine students received Eureka support in the summer of 2011 uh, to do faculty sponsored research uh, in labs over the summer. Um, we had 22 students this last summer. Um, the biology program has been raising money from alumni, the U Eureka Biology Alumni Research Awards um, for the last uh, nine years. This last summer, we funded eight students to do research. Um, the Explorations in STEM program is funded by PSEG and also with contributions from biology. Five students got stipends to participate in that this last summer. Um, uh, there were 14 students on the iGEM team. Five of those students had support. Um, and an NIH funded program, a medical research foundation funded program. This, this last summer, there were 61 students that did research on a full-time basis over the summer, including 52 um, that received support, uh, that got stipends to be involved in, in research over the summer. Um, so just a close out with that, that this is a research uh, one university. Um, uh, so a third of the incoming freshmen do research for academic credit by the time they're a senior. Um, and a significant number of the students have in-depth immersive research experiences in the summer um, through these different funding mechanisms. Um, so that is the end of my slideshow. And I think we'll um, bring back the... There we go, stop the screen sharing. Uh, we'll bring back uh, uh, so Kira and Katie, and I think we're gonna approach, get ready to do the Q and A uh, part of this. Um, so um, let me just start here. Um, uh, I think Katie, you met before when she, in, when she said hi at the beginning. Um, Kira Schulteis um, is uh, one of the full-time advisors uh, in the biology program. She's been working with us for a few, about five years now, six years. Um, uh, 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 if you really want to find out about Stony Brook, uh, Kira was an undergraduate here, and Kira also got her PhD in molecular and cell biology here at Stony Brook. Um, so she's a wealth of knowledge, uh, not just about uh, the bio curriculum, um, but life at Stony Brook and, and also the biological sciences. Um, and so, Kira, I think you were monitoring the Q&A. Um, yes. What are so, the burning questions here? <laughs> yeah, so um, we were kind of saving the questions for this session, so, so you weren't being ignored. Um, so a lot of the questions initially were really about the curriculum, right? And since that's what we started with, there were a couple questions between differences between the biology major and the biochemistry major. And um, Dr. Gergen may have addressed some of these um, as the, the presentation went on. Um, so just to reiterate, you know, the bio and the biochem majors are very, very similar for the first two years, right? Just like the bio BA and the bio BS are very similar for the first two years. The biggest difference between bio and biochem, you need a little bit of a higher um, calculus requirement for the biochem major as, uh, as compared to the bio major. But the biggest difference is really going to be in the upper division bio courses that you need to take. So as Dr. Gergen had shown, for the upper division for the biochem major, you need to take genetics, cell biology, biochem one, biochem two. So all within kind of that um, molecular biology track as well as taking two elective courses. Um, so again, a lot of students, I think this was another question, a lot of students will flip-flop between the bio major and the biochem major, especially within those, those 
initial years. If you start taking organic chemistry, you take biochem one and you hate it, you might not want to be a biochem major right, and continue the biochem two. You might want to hop over to the bio biology major. So we have a lot of students that go back and forth while they kind of pinpoint what they want to study. Um, there was also a question about the curriculum of the biology major versus marine biology. Um, so that's a good distinction to be aware of. The, the marine sciences is actually part of the, the school of, um, what is it, atmospheric science. Uh, school of marine and atmospheric sciences. Marine and atmospheric sciences, thank you. Um, so that is actually, a, it's its own major and it's actually outside of the, the College of Arts and Sciences. So, um, there is a little bit of overlap. You might be taking, you know, some of the same intro bio courses, some of the marine science degrees require chemistry, things like that. Um, but again, once you start reaching the upper divisions um, and even some of the intro courses, they're gonna diverge a little bit. So you might want to, again, try maybe a bio 201, which is the ecology and evolution based intro bio course and see if it kind of leads you in one or the other direction. So it's always good. You can see us as advisors for the biology major, go to their advisor for marine sciences and kind of pinpoint what you want to study. Um, in addition, let's see, what other questions did students have asking about, you know, the biochem major as far as preparing you for um, PA programs? Again, the bio BS, the bio BA, the biochemistry major, they're all very popular for all of the pre-health kind of programs. The P, um, PA programs really can be the requirements for this really can be covered by any of those of those majors. You just want to make sure when you're choosing your upper division courses that you're fulfilling the requirements of, of the program that you're looking to apply to. Um, similarly, there was a question about vet school. Um, that Those programs particularly depends on the program you're applying to, but they really have a lot of upper division bios that are required and very specific. They want some physiology, some, they want some chordate or zoology of some sort. Um, so sometimes the bio BS makes the most sense to prepare you for vet school. Um, so continue please writing the questions in here while I talk. I'm just gonna kind of yeah. going through chronologically. Peter, is there something I, you I want to add? At, yeah, so I looked at several of the questions and so there was a bunch of questions about research and that was the okay. stuff I talked about at the end. So let me mm -hmm. talk about that uh, for a minute. Um, so it's on the one slide where I showed the numbers. There are a few students that get involved with research as a freshman. Um, it's very few. It typically, it'll be um, zero fall semester freshman, maybe one if it was somebody that did a high school Siemens project in the lab and they stayed there. Um, spring of the freshman year, some. Uh, uh, typically, I mean, the entering research workshop that we've been doing since 2012, the goal there is students that are really interested in finding about research um, and haven't had the opportunity to, to get involved yet, um, that we've given them an opportunity to find out what's the landscape like, how do I get involved, how do I reach out to professors by the summer after their sophomore year, fall of their junior year at the latest. The goal here is that you've got at least a couple semesters in one summer that if you get into a lab and it's working out, that you like it, they like you, um, that you have a, a, an in-depth experience that gets you on to it's on your CV or your resume. You've got a really strong letter of recommendation for whatever you want to do. You've really learned some stuff. And importantly, you've probably made a contribution. If you've spent a couple of semesters in a summer in a lab, um, you might be a co-author of a paper. You may have gotten that feeling of ownership and producing new knowledge that you've actually figured something out. Um, and so the goal is to have students become aware of this and to think seriously about whether or not they want to do it um, uh, well before their senior year, um, by the fall of their, their junior year at the latest. Um, we don't accept absolutely everybody that applies the entering research workshop into the workshop. Um, uh, we will not accept any first semester freshman. Um, the, uh, if you're gung-ho and you know you want to join a lab and you got enough credentials for somebody to take you as a first semester freshman, then Godspeed, right? Good luck. Um, mm -hmm. uh, the, <clears throat> um, the, what our goal for your first semester would be is that you establish that you, that, uh, you like Stony Brook and Stony Brook likes you, that you're taking the classes here, you're being successful, um, that you found some people that you like to hang out with, some people you like to study with, that you figured out how to be a successful student at Stony Brook. Um, we will occasionally take second semester freshmen in, but then it would be in the sophomore year after you've taken 
some chemistry, some math, you've done an a bio course or two, and you have a, a beginnings of an idea of what you might be interested in. So that we paint the picture of the landscape. Here's all the things you could do that you've got an idea of what it is that you might be the most interested in. And one of the goals of that workshop is that you come away with a draft letter of inquiry to a specific faculty mentor where we've helped guide you to figure out how, how to write to people. Um, so someone asked, do they take freshmen? Um, I'll tell you, there are a few faculty uh, that specifically like to take freshmen. Um, uh, where they usually get their freshmen from is uh, that it'll be somebody that's a student that's in the WISE honor program or the honors program that has some kind of connection that gets them to know about this faculty member as a freshman. Um, uh, why would you want to take a freshman as a faculty member? What most faculty will say, they don't want a student that already knows everything. Um, uh, the goal is to educate students. What you want is a student that's motivated and interested. And you can be equally as motivated and interested as a freshman as a, a second semester junior. Um, the advantage is if you train that person as a freshman, you've got a trained pair of interested, motivated hands for three years in terms of the, the product that you might get out of that student, uh, it could potentially be greater. Um, uh, someone asked specifically, are there undergraduates at Stony Brook conducting coronavirus research? And the answer is yes. Um, uh, when we shut down research in March, we had to shut it down completely for about three months. Uh, the only research programs that were allowed to continue to do anything um, were the programs that were doing COVID research. Um, and I don't think the undergraduates were allowed to participate uh, in April and May. Um, but when we got to the summer, there were undergraduates that were participating in some of the COVID-19 uh, research programs. All right, Kira, back to you. Um, so there were a couple of people that kind of was more interested in learning about the, the types of advising at Stony Brook, which I think is an important point to go through. Um, so when, when freshmen start at Stony Brook, you have what's called an undergraduate college advisor. They would be your freshman advisor and they're really there to make sure that you understand the university requirements. Um, there's some kind of intro courses that you're going to be taking within your undergraduate college. Um, so they're kind of your general advisor. And then there are major advisors like me. Um, and what I would do is advise you on the biology and the biochemistry major. Um, in addition, there also are pre-health advisors. So uh, there are a lot of questions about obviously pre-health and um, and how they students make sure that they're following these these prerequisites. So there are pre-health advisors as well that can kind of guide you depending on what kind, type of program you're interested in, medical school, dental school, vet school, PA, nursing. Um, and as part of that, they might help you decide what type of major you would want to follow if you're really just trying to fulfill these requirements. And it's important to know at Stony Brook, there isn't a pre-med track. So there's no official declaration that I'm pre-med, I'm pre-dental. Well, what that means is that you, you know that you're pre-med and you're making sure that as part of your undergraduate studies, you're finishing all the prerequisites for medical school. So when we say that the biology major, for instance, or the biochem major can fulfill all of those science prereqs, what that means is that we have the year of chemistry with lab. We have the year of organic chemistry, the year of physics, the year of intro bio with lab. And then technically say for medical school, the only upper division bio course you really need is biochemistry. Though some of the programs they prefer if you might have a microbiology or genetics or something else. So if you're following the, the pre-med track and you're a biology major, you just need to make sure that as one of your upper division courses, you're taking biochemistry. Um, and that's what we mean by, by the pre-med track and that you're fulfilling the prereqs. So you meet every semester with your general advisor, your major advisor, if you wanna keep on track and make sure that you're moving along, maybe not every semester, but once a year, something like that. And you meet with pre-health advising to make sure that you're fulfilling all the prerequisites for your health program that you're going to apply into after, um, after undergraduate. Um, so, that's what that means. I know that sometimes students are unsure how that fits together. So when we say that the biochem major or either biology major would fulfill these requirements, that's just making sure that you're choosing the requirements that you need for the specific program you're applying into. Um, Peter, is there- yeah, I had a couple more questions about research. Um, and I'm not gonna answer all of them specifically. Um, so somebody wanted to know what I do. Um, so I do fruit fly de developmental genetics. Um, uh, uh, so now you can quit listening to me um, because that's boring. Um, but there were people interested in, can we do biological anthropology? Can we do oncology? Can we, you know, is there field work? Um, uh, I'll just say that um, probably every important major area of biology um, 
that there are people here at Steiner Brook uh, that are doing those kinds of things. Um, they may not be in the Department of Ecology and Evolution, in the Department of Biochemistry and Cell Biology, but coming back to the research faculty sponsors, um, between the School of Marine Atmospheric Sciences, the medical school, the dental school, the vet school, um, uh, there is a Department of Anthropology, which has a, a, a third of the faculty work on biological anthropology. Um, there are lots of faculty that will take students that are biology majors or biochemistry majors to do research in, in all of these uh, different, different areas. Um, somebody asked about capstone things. Um, I'll just mention, um, so we don't have a capstone um, a course per se. Um, uh, in order to graduate with honors in either biology or biochemistry, you have to write an honors thesis. And so you could view that as a capstone. Um, uh, it's about, um, uh, in biochemistry, it's about 10% of the students that graduate with honors every year. That's, they have a GPA that's 3.5 or higher, and they've done independent research for a couple semesters and written an honors thesis on that research. In biology, um, it's uh, not quite 10%. It's about 30 students a year. Uh, that, that graduate with honors, where they've got a good GPA, they've done research um, for a while as an undergraduate and have written an honors thesis that's been reviewed by a faculty committee and approved. Um, and I would call that a capstone in experience. And that honors graduation, that goes on to your diploma. Um, so that's a permanent thing that you would carry away with you. More important than that, if you've been in a lab for a couple of years and you've written an honors thesis, um, you have some indelible memories of what it was like to do research uh, as an undergraduate that will probably stick with you um, uh, for a lifetime. Kira, you went back to you. So I, I actually, I'm going to combine two questions. So there was a question about tutoring at Stony Brook, and there's also a question about um, tips for incoming freshmen. So my tips for incoming freshmen is please use the tutoring, which we do offer at, on Stony Brook campus. Um, there is an academic success and tutoring center. That's a general large um, tutoring center that you can have either one-on-one -on -one tutoring or group or a group setting that you sign up for. You schedule appointments um, in order, to, and it covers a, a lot of the popular courses, not quite all, but most. There's also residential tutoring, which occur within the, the um, a dorm setting. And in addition, a lot of the science court, um, the science departments will have their own learning centers. So there's a math learning center, a chemistry learning center, a biology learning center. So not only are all of these tutoring and extra help free, you're paying for them already in your, in your student fees. So we hope that you use them. Um, my biggest tip is make sure that you are keeping up, especially with the SEM courses along the way that you're going to these, to these tutoring centers, making sure that you're doing your homeworks correctly so that you're prepared for the exams. When you take the exams, go with your, you know, with the questions that you had that you did not get correct. So you're able to, as soon as possible, <laughs> learn the answers and build upon that. So, there are lots and lots of resources to get help. There's also um, both professor office hours as well as TA, which is teaching assistant office hours. These are students that are undergraduates who have already taken these courses before. So there's lots and lots of opportunities to get help. Please take advantage when you come. Yeah, so I'll just I'll leverage off that a little bit in terms of being successful during the first semester. So I talked about in terms of being academically prepared, um, Coming in, were you ready to take calculus and that you're ready to take Gen Chem 1? If you're in that position, then you're solid to get started. Um, maybe you place out of calc and into the second semester of general chemistry. That's fantastic. Um, you don't have to be in calc and chemistry the first semester, but if you do that, then you're, you're in solid shape. Um, in terms of being successful, um, one of the most important things, um, uh, in especially in a large school, whether that's Stony Brook or you go someplace else, um, is in this group of 18,000 undergraduates. Um, how do you find some friends? How do you figure out um, who you want to hang out with, who you want to study with, what, what you want to do? Um, and so finding your community is really important. The undergraduate colleges are one mechanism that tries to do that for students, put them into groups where it's not with 5,000 students, but with, with, with 500 that you can find a few friends there. A really important resource is the student clubs. Um, the, there are a lot of student clubs on campus and some of them are uh, in disciplines. So there's a biochemistry society, there's a synthetic biology society. We one had one student that asked about how to get involved with iGEM, um, sign up for the synthetic biology society in the fall, you'll be well on your way. Um, there's a neuroscience club. There's a lot of different clubs that are discipline based. 
There's a number of clubs that are pre-professional. If you're pre-med, which we had a lot of questions about pre-med, we have a very active pre-med society. It's a very active pre-dental society, um, uh, pre-PA, um, pre-vet school, um, uh, a lot of the professional things. And then there's the, let's just go have some fun clubs, ultimate frisbee, um, uh, you know, things that are, you know, uh, dance clubs, uh, taekwondo, just the other side of your brain, the other side of your body. Um, uh, as a freshman, um, whether it's here, wherever you go, um, try to find a couple of clubs where you're sort of interested in what they're doing and get to know some people there. Um, and if at the end of your, your fall semester, your freshman year, you can point to, here's a couple of friends I made in my undergraduate college. Here's a couple that I made in the study groups for the classes I'm taking. And here's a couple from a couple of different clubs I'm in. You're well on your way to being very successful as a person and as a student um, at Stonybrook. Um, so I see more questions about, um, you know, choosing between the biochemistry major and the bio BA and BS as far as for dental school, for PA school, for med school. Um, I just wanna reiterate, you know, in the first semester, um, students usually are going to be taking chemistry and calculus of some sort, right? Um, if you, as long as you're within one of these three, these three majors when you're starting, see how the first semester goes, see how the second semester goes, where you're taking again, chemistry, starting maybe an intro bio course and, and continuing with calculus or doing statistics, you can easily move from one to the other. I think a lot of students get very stressed with starting as a freshman and knowing right away, am I a bio BA, am I a bio BS, am I a biochem major? And you wanna, you wanna try to go with your best guess, but you can very easily move between these three specific majors and I think that a lot of that will have to be, let me take my first course or two here, see how it goes. Maybe you've, you're taking a general course for your university requirements in history and you love that in your first semester or your second semester. Maybe then that means you're gonna do a bio BA, right, <laughs> with, a, with a history minor. Um, I think it's important to realize that all of these will kind of prepare you for health fields. And it's really not until you get into your sophomore, junior year that you have to lock in. Okay, so don't be too stressed about that already. I'll just add to that, that what we're able to offer you as prospective freshmen is the opportunity to make that decision as a second semester sophomore or junior. Um, uh, that, uh, the options are there to, to do all three of these things where the, the start is gonna be the same. Um, and I'll just contrast it. I won't name any other schools uh, call them out. Uh, but when we constructed the bio BA at Stony Brook, we were very intentional to make sure that at the foundational level, it had all of the stuff that pre-med students needed. Um, and that um, uh, the, the minor was going to some, be something that complements that, that did that gave the students something that they could point to that, that differentiated them, that made them different. Um, there are other schools in the SUNY system that have a required minor uh, for their BA degree. Um, but the what they require um, is all of the upper division bio courses, uh, but they don't require the physics and the chemistry. So if you're pre-med, you might as well be a bio BS because if you got to do chemistry and physics to be pre-med, then you got to take all that to, to get into med school, then why would you do a minor on top of that um, unless you wanted to? Um, and so, you know, we thought about this long and hard to try to make it where it would really serve the students and give them the, the most options and the most different ways to, to be, be successful. And I just want to add to that. So on our undergraduate biology website, which is stonybrook.edu slash biology, we do have four-year plans there. Um, we have the requirements. We have semester by semester kind of suggested schedules. So I, I see some students are asking about that. Go directly to our website. There's tons of resources on there that, that talk about advising, that talk about research. Um, and that can kind of show you the spread, how many courses at one time, usually say two to three per semester of science courses. That would be a good way to compare between the BA, the BS. You can click on another link to get to the biochem major. It gives you the same information for that. So Kira, I can see there's a question for you. Where is this? How does the WISE program work with the bio major? <laughs> um, so I was a WISE student back many years ago now. Um, so as, as part of the, the, wise, the, wise, the WISE program, you have to be in a STEM, a STEM program. What it does is in addition to having your, your university requirements and your say 
biology major requirements, if that's the major that you choose, um, there's going to be specific WISE courses that you need to take along the way. There's courses that, ex that will let you do kind of quick rotations in different types of research labs, um, different seminars. It has support for tutoring and, and registration, things like that. So um, it's just another layer <laughs> on top of, um, on top of the, the major requirements. And that's very similar to um, what it would be for say like the honors college. Right. Well, what I'll just add is that um, Sakira does go and meet with the wise students uh, to give them as a group advising. And that's something that's not just the wise students and the honor students, um, but the undergraduate colleges, the biology advisors try to go and meet uh, not uh, this summer before your fall of your freshman year, um, but during spring of your freshman year to go and meet uh, with the undergraduate colleges as a group and just talk about. So now if you've done everything right, this is where you should be. These are the two or three things you should be thinking about in terms of next fall, what you might want to register for. Um, it's not so detailed that we need to have a 20 minute appointment that we sit down and spend a lot of time with you, but that we can sort of cover. Here's, here's the three or four major things you should be thinking about and what might influence whether you decide to, to take um, Bio 203 or Bio 201 in the fall or um, you know, those kinds of things. You know, there were some questions about the size of courses. Do you yes. want to? Yes, yeah, I saw on? those before. Um, <laughs> so this is a large school, um, and uh, we have some large classes. Um, I, the general chemistry class in the fall. Um, so everybody that's going to be a biology major should be in Gen Chem one in the fall or in molecular science one if they placed out of that. Um, that's more than a thousand students. Um, there's no lecture hall on campus that holds all those students. So that, those are classes that have multiple sections. Um, there is a lecture hall um, that up until now has seated 570 students. Um, uh, that lecture hall is used for some of the large math, biology, physics, and chemistry classes uh, where there'll be 570 students in a class. Um, this is like taking a class uh, in your assembly hall in your high school, right? Where there's 500 people and everybody's sitting there, except the chairs are not as comfortable as the chairs in a high school assembly hall usually. Um, so the, the classes are very big at the beginning. Um, uh, I'll call that a negative at some level. I, the faculty are very aware that these are big classes and do a lot of things to try to engage the students. Um, we have a lot of faculty that do a lot of active learning things. Um, Bio 203 or the physiology class, um, uh, that's the popular version of that is offered in a, a flipped or hybrid. Um, the class only meets one once a week for about two hours. Um, the students are expected to watch the lectures on their own time before they come to class. And then they spend the whole two hours doing problem solving in groups uh, where there's five or six faculty that are walking around in a room of 250 students. The students are working in groups of four or five to actively solve problems together. Um, uh, and so there's a lot of things to engage the students um, in these large classes. That said, um, faculty member that's teaching 570 students does not get to know everybody by name. Uh, unless they've got some mental defect and can remember that many different people. Um, uh, it is possible for you to get to know the faculty member well, and especially if you want to do research and you're taking Bio 203, and this just sounds like really interesting stuff, go to office hours, talk to the faculty member. This is a really interesting class. I want to learn more. Um, how do I get involved in research? And I missed this answer on the midterm. I thought it was close, and I just want to make sure that I, I understand why I got this wrong. Um, so. Faculty will try to do their job to reach out to you. Um, you have a job, you have a responsibility to also reach out to them. And that's particularly true in the large classes. When you get to the upper division classes, they get a little bit smaller, um, but they're still not you know, pro seminar classes with six students. Uh, there'll still be 50, 70, you know, 80 students in the class. Um, it gets easier to know the faculty as the classes get a little bit smaller. Um, it is one of the advantages, one of the attributes of doing research as an undergraduate. Um, if you're doing research, um, then you've joined a lab where you're probably one of a group of nine or 10 people, where there's a faculty member and there's his team that's doing stuff. That gives you a community, sort of a second home on campus um, to know. Um, and whether you're doing research or anything else, identifying those small communities where you can feel you're part of something that you're uh, making the contribution that you're doing something that um, uh, that's rewarding to you and that that's a value added to the community um, is a really valuable thing to do. Um, so they're very large at the beginning, they get smaller later, but it's, I'm not gonna 
try to trick you into thinking that you're going to come to a small school where people are going to hold your hand all the way through and you're going to be sitting and doing kumbaya with five or six people uh, around the campfire at night. Um, so there was a question about dual enrollment credits for calculus one and two. Um, so that really depends on on where the credits were, were taken and how the 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 math department has evaluated. So if the math department says that it's equivalent to our calculus one and two, then certainly they would be accepted for the biology major um, and you would not have to take those again. It's similar for AP um, credit. So if students earn certain courses, calculus one or calculus two through through AP exams, um, then we we certainly take that for the major as well. So it's it's based on what the university accepts. Yeah, so for both math and chemistry, which again, those are the starting points for the bio curriculum, um, there are placement exams. The incoming freshmen will take a placement exam and they'll say, yes, you've placed out of Gen Chem 1 into, into Molecular Science 1, and you've placed completely out of calculus. You're, you're done with calculus. Um, um, so both of those departments uh, have placement exams to make sure that students are um, uh, in a course that's appropriate for them. They're not going to be bored, but they're also not going to drown because they're, they're completely out of their element. Um, so we have a question about registering for summer research. Um, so the summer research, um, uh, what I showed there was students that are getting stipends to do research in the summer. Um, uh, we typically, um, and this is recorded, maybe I shouldn't say this, but we don't ask the students to register in the summer. Um, if they register, we ask them, actually we ask them to register for zero credits um, uh, that we don't I don't think it's appropriate that students are paying tuition money um, to then basically be working in somebody's lab. Um, uh, and so uh, in the summer, um, if you register, it's typically for zero credits, and then you could either be a volunteer or you could be uh, in one of these programs where you're, where you're being funded. Um, again, finding a, a research opportunity, um, uh, there are a lot of faculty that take students, but it's not an infinite number and there are a lot of students. Most faculty are not out um, beating the bushes trying to find students to come work in their labs. Um, uh, that the students need to do a little bit of outreach to find faculty that would be interested in taking them. And that's the Entering Research Workshop. We provide some tips on how to do that. Um, uh, that uh, and a lot of the clubs, uh, we know that a lot of students are interested in research. They will have the neuroscience access. We'll have a meeting to talk about. This is how you get involved uh, in research at the university. Um, uh, so we have, I think, uh, two more minutes. Uh, Katie, Kira, anything else you guys want to add in the last little bit here? Um, no, I think we've we're, we've been covering a lot. I would just stress again, you know, if we do not get to your particular question, look on the undergraduate biology website. Um, it may be answered there. Right? We have some frequently asked questions on that page. We have checklists for the major. We have a lot of the, the curriculum stuff. You'll see a lot of the same um, figures that, that Dr. Gergen showed in his, in his presentation on our website as well. So. I posted the um, website in the chat and I'll do it again. Um, Great, thank you. Just so people can see it. <laughs> and I think if you just, if you Google biology Stony Brook. It, it does come right up. <laughs> And again, the biology program, its job is to serve the students that are taking bio courses and the faculty that teach those courses. That website, 98% of what's there is for the students. It's information to help you figure out uh, what you need, to, what you can do to be successful here at Stony Brook. Um, and our email addresses are unfortunately on the same website. I was just going to say that, but I wasn't sure if I should. <laughs> yeah, so you actually can find um, Kira and everybody on the website. So if you want to get in touch with them, um, they've put themselves available to you. So um, I think with that, we're going to wrap up our event today. Um, thank you so much to both of you for being with us today and sharing your insight um, on the undergraduate biology program with all of these students. Um, I know I appreciate it, and I'm sure they do as well. Um, so again, this presentation will be available on our YouTube page um, in just a couple days. You'll actually um, get an email with a link to the event um, that happened, so you can re-review it at any time. Um, so thanks so much to everybody for coming. Have a great holiday. Yes. All right. Hi. So bye, everybody. Happy holidays, and let's have a good start to 2021. <laughs> yes. Fingers crossed. <laughs>